You know, every now and then, old Baldy McFadden over here, um, you know, realizes that uh, sometimes I say some stupid shit. Well, it's not like I just realized that. I know I say stupid shit all the fucking time. You know, I'm not going to pretend like, uh, you know, my podcast is filled with... uh, I don't know, Oscar award winning fucking um, insight, but you know, I'm an, I have an open mind, Uh, you know, I'm not afraid to admit when maybe my perspective is a little off or needs a little tweaking, you know, part of having an open mind means that you, uh, you're allowed uh, to make mistakes and adjust your perspective uh, accordingly. Um, the last podcast that I did on Monday, um, I, had, uh, I had talked a little bit about the whole, you know, the Me Too movement and uh, the sexual harassment thing and Louis C.K. and, and uh, you know, I had made some comments that uh, a lot of... Um, my female listeners, not all, but a lot of them, or not even a lot of them, uh, you know, uh, enough to make me reevaluate, uh, you know, or not, not reevaluate, but at least take a, a a second look at my own thought process in regards to this. They, you know, they, they weren't happy that I was basically taking a stance of, uh, um, you know, that, if they, I mean, I know that it came off as like, well, if you want to continue having a career, then, you know, you got to be quiet about what's happening to you. And even though that wasn't the, that wasn't what I was getting at, it was just, you know, people act or react on emotions all the time, right? I'm guilty of it. You're guilty of it. Um, But I've come to realize that I don't know what I I, actually I don't know what I've come to realize. What I what I think is that uh, obviously there's a real problem out there uh, of guys. I mean, and I I was never in denial about this in the first place, but it, it seems like there is a real distinct issue. Uh, with, with guys doing a lot of creepy, you know, inappropriate stuff, uh, to women. And as much as I want to, you know, I've painted in the, in the past that, you know, yes, that there are women predators, uh, in existence as well. But the reality is, is that most men uh, most heterosexual men, um, you know, I, I, maybe it doesn't, if you get harassed or, uh, I don't know if, if you're the victim of a, uh, of a sexual predator, you know, of, of a female, I would say that most men, while it might make you feel uncomfortable when it happens and it might, uh, you know, the experience might stick with you. I have to assume that, um, I mean, assuming you're not a child when it happened, um, I have to assume that the experience isn't as, uh, damaging as it is, uh, the other way around, you know, I mean, if, uh, if my, you know, if I had a female boss and, uh, or not even a female boss, just, uh, you know, if I'm around a, uh, a female that is, uh, you know, that, that has more power than I do. And she, um, you know, for some reason we end up in, in a room together, uh, me believing that the, uh, that the situation is innocent and, uh, you know, she asks or, or doesn't even, or maybe doesn't even ask if she can, uh, you know, finger herself in front of me. Um, yeah, I might be a little weirded out by it, but am I going to, as a guy, am I, am I going to take that experience 
and uh, I don't know. I guess maybe I, you know, if she had the power, if she had the power to affect uh, my well-being, I guess you know. I guess that's what I'm getting at, right? My own roundabout way of trying to figure this out. Um, that if I if I were to put myself in the shoes of these ladies that uh, that have had this experience. Um, I would say that, yeah, if, if, if it's a case of, or not even if, I don't want to put any stipulations on it, but, you know, I could see me being a little reluctant to speak out if the, if the woman that did that to me, uh, had the ability to affect my well being. You know, if if she was the one that that everybody respected and and paid attention to, I yeah, I might be a little reluctant to talk about it. I mean, especially if uh, my well being is important to me, which you know obviously it is. So when you put it into that perspective, perhaps my you know my podcast from Monday, and you know in previous podcasts. Uh, before that, where it was just sort of like, okay, can we just get over this? Uh, you know, it was, uh, you know, I, hey, I made a fucking, you know, there was a glitch in my perspective. You know, perhaps I lacked uh, the empathy to make the connection or to understand or, you know, uh, the the reality is, is that, you know, as guys... Um, I think, uh, Mark Marin said it best that, you know, that it's not easy. I, I mean, he, well, he said it, he said something to this effect. I'm, or to this effect, I'm, uh, you know, of course butchering it, but you know, it, it's not easy as, uh, as a guy to, to really be able to empathize with, um, with women, you know, and the trials and tribulations that they, uh, that they have to go through. Um, now does this mean that I'm going to, uh, you know, become one of these guys on Twitter that's, uh, you know, uh, filled with outrage? Probably not, but that is, uh, you know, it's because that's, you know, my male chauvinistic ego, uh, you know, Neanderthalic, uh, upbringing, you know, you don't grow up where I grew up, uh, you know, without, I mean, at least as a guy, you don't grow up, um, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it was different with the times. I mean, I try not to, you know, basically what I'm saying is that, you know, where I, when I, where I grew up and, uh, you know, obviously the, the time period of growing up, you know, men were men, men acted like men you know, sans all the, uh, the harassment and abuse, but you know, you, you didn't cry. You didn't, uh, uh, I don't know. You didn't do the things that, uh, probably we should as a species, uh, you know, evolve away from, but, um, you know, I try not to, I try not to be like that with my son, you know, cause I realize, you know, I, I'm not blind to my own fucking, uh, um, uh, less evolved self self, you know, I'm not blind to it. I, I realized that, uh, that I probably would be better off, uh, if I were able to express myself in, in, a in a more open fashion other than, uh, calling everybody cunts. And, uh, you know, I mean, I, I understand the benefit of being sensitive to a degree, you know, but the unfortunate thing and the reason why I'm still not going to start, you know, twittering away my, uh, my outrage is because I am a guy and I do recognize that, you know, that the guys that are constantly, I'm not all of them, obviously, but you know, I've, every guy knows the, you know, knows a guy or has uh, been around guys who will, pretty much do anything, including, uh, compromise their integrity, uh, to try and win the affections of women. And I firmly believe that a lot of these guys, these male feminists online, 
uh, a lot of them are just trying to be an ally so that they can get the attention and hopefully some residual ass from it. Now, is every guy that's doing this, uh, you know, the same way or, or the same as what I'm describing? No, obviously not. But my, uh, you know, my fucking male spider sense <coughs> is usually pretty spot on. I can usually tell when a guy is, uh, you know, trying to, uh, he, he is in fact the, the predator that most women are not aware of, you know, the creepy guy, the guy that, uh, you know, hits on you and, you know, and, you know, and whisk your cat calls and all of that stuff. I mean, those guys are pretty obvious, you know, you can spot those ones, you know, it's kind of like, uh, like our political climate, right? You know, we all know that Republicans, their goal is to basically, uh, you know, make as much money as possible while shitting on the, uh, the, you know, the, the poor and less fortunate, you know, those guys you can see coming, you know, nothing that, uh, that Trump or, or the Republican party is currently doing is a surprise to really anyone, but the, 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 the party that I'm most concerned about is the Democrats because they pretend like they're the party of the people when in reality they're they're fighting for the same agenda that the Republicans are. So so these guys, you know, to try and uh bring this uh this analogy uh to together is is a lot of these guys that are, you know, so outraged to the point where they're, you know, they're they're tweeting about it and uh you know and attacking other men <coughs> um those are the guys that that a lot of women don't see coming right you know if if you uh if you've read anything or or, or you know did uh, did any sort of research on like um uh, what was this fucking name uh, Ted Bundy right one of his uh one of his little schemes was to pretend to be hurt, right? He'd fucking wear a fake cast or, or, uh, uh, you know, walk around on crutches or some shit and drop his stuff. And, you know, women, because you guys are just naturally motherly, you know, you, you see somebody in trouble, you want to help. It's an admirable, uh, quality to have. But unfortunately, it also opens you up to people like a Ted Bundy or like the the male feminists on on social media, you know, to to guys that are just playing possum, that are just doing enough to get your attention to make you feel like either you share some sort of ideology or or he's in need of care or whatever. I'm not. And again, I'm not saying all men are like this. I'm just saying a lot of them are. You know, um, I'm just saying that, that you know, I, I don't know. I don't know how I got on to this, uh, this particular topic. I was trying to explain that I've had, a, a an adjustment in fucking perspective here, but, um, you know, ladies, um, you gotta be cautious of the guy that's trying really, really hard to be your ally. Again, not all men are like this. Some are genuinely, uh, you know, just empathetic, uh, sensitive, uh, you know, souls. But a lot of guys are just looking for a way to uh, get you to drop your fucking defense. And, you know, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so uh, for those that didn't... Uh, didn't enjoy or didn't like my last podcast because of the stance I was taking. Um, you know, I apologize, I guess. Um, you know, everybody's entitled to, uh, to an opinion, right? A perspective. And, you know, for me, uh, for me, you know, it was, it was beginning to be a little too much, you know, every other day, sometimes it's every day, sometimes it's every other hour, Somebody else is coming forward and talking about, you know, they've been, they were molested when, you know, back in 19, you know, 86, uh, you know, on the set of fucking different strokes or some shit. It's just, you know, it, it, it got a little much, 
Um, you know, but I, I didn't want to appear, uh, you know, insensitive to, to, to the women that do, ex- that have experienced this or continue to experience it. I, you know, it, it took me a while, but I'm finally, I think, uh, you know, <clears throat> empathetic, uh, enough to, to understand that, you know, that while it might be annoying to hear these allegations, uh, every single day that, you know, that, that some real trauma, uh, was caused, you know, that, that there was some real scarring, um, you know, and it's, it, it's unfair, I guess, as a guy to, you know, for me to, just be like, well, you know, consider the ramifications of, uh, of expressing your, your, uh, your pain, you know, it just like even saying that now, it it makes me a little fucking disgusted in myself that I even, that I even said that. So, you know, I'm, I'm evolving, you know, I'm growing up, you know, hopefully that's enough. If it's not, if you're still like, well, but you said this, you know, fucking, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, well, you know, you know, some people are just always going to be upset. Uh, you know, they're they're never going to an accept uh, an apology. You know, they, uh, you know, sometimes uh, they're just some. You just cannot. You can't satisfy everybody. You know, but the fact that I am, you know, there there's a shift. There's a paradigm shift within my perspective, at least when it comes to. Uh, to all of these, uh, allegations that are coming out against the guys. Um, the one thing that I am, I'm, I'm, uh, curious about, right. It's cause you, I mean, if you, if, you know, for these celebrities and stuff, uh, you have to assume that because of the momentum being built by, uh, by all these ladies, uh, coming forward, I would think that if you are one of these fucking guys that, uh, that did something inappropriate, um, why aren't you just, why don't you just come out now before, you know, get ahead of the fucking, uh, the scandal, right? Cause a lot of people's careers, I think are probably over now, uh, because of, of what's going on. And, and, uh, you know, while I know that some people are not, um, not satisfied with, uh, with, uh, Lou, uh, Louis CK's apology, you know, as far as I know, and I mean, I haven't paid that much attention, but as far as I know that he, he's really the first one that's actually just been like, you know what? I did some shit. I fucked up. I realized I caused pain. You know, everybody else sort of, you know, they, they try and dance around it. They, they, they try and make it seem like, well, I, you know, I didn't know it was such a big deal, but now that I've been caught, you know, it's just, it's just that sort of thing. Uh, you know, Louis CK seemed to own up to it. You know, so I'm, I'm, if there are any, uh, any male celebrities listening to this podcast, which there probably isn't, cause let's be realistic, you know, I've probably got like 11 fucking listeners at this point. Um, you know, just come out now. Don't wait until the, uh, you know, until the person that you did something to, uh, comes forward. Cause it's just going to make you, it's just going to make it worse. Just own up to it now. Get in front of it. I think that that is, you know, and I don't want to seem like I'm advising, you know, uh, these uh, the, these fucking harassers on the best way to uh, to not end up, you know, with with no career. But it, it just it would be better if I mean, if your concern is that you know, if somebody comes forward and and says this, you know you're always going to be looked at as the guy that tried, you know, that did something like that. And you know, you're only really owning up to it because you got caught that sort of thing. So just get out in front of it. Yeah. You know, people will be upset with you. And there are some people that no matter what you do, they won't be satisfied. They will, uh, you know, forever, uh, treat you like a pariah, you know, but, but most people, I think, you know, when it comes to most things that if you just, you know, unless you fucked with kids, there's no forgiveness for that, you know, but, but most people are at least are understanding if you feel like, okay, well, you know, 
I'm just going to put it out there, uh, you know, that, that I did this, that, or whatever, you know, and I feel like shit and it sucks that, uh, you know, that, that I had, that it waited this long and that it took, you know, everybody else getting outed. And yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's part of being a man, I think, right? You just own up to the shit that you, uh, uh, you know, to the, the disgusting behavior that you've, uh, you know, um, taken part in. You know, but I also have to, you know, if there is any, if I'm holding on to anything that I, that I said on uh, this past podcast that upset people, there's one thing I will hold on to is that you have to, you can't just automatically, you know, assign guilt to, to the guy because some women, some woman said that she did this or she did that. I'm not saying that. That, that you don't believe her, but you at least, you know, we still have the fucking, uh, uh, the, the court of law, you know, there's fucking still due process, you know, unfortunately it seems like there are a lot of fucking creeps out there doing this shit, but there also are some women that, you know, will see an advance or, or, or an opportunity and I'm just saying that before you just automatically condemn the guy based on the, you know, on the, on somebody's claim that you at least, you know, I don't know, you get the full story or, or there, you know, just, I don't know. I mean, cause, cause that does happen. You know, we can, I mean, yes, there seems to be a rampant problem of harassment going on. But we also can't pretend like there aren't opportuni- opportunistic people that will see an, a, a, you know, because obviously, a, you know, like Kevin Spacey, as chances are, you know, even though he uh, apparently was after the boys, but chances are he's not going to get another opportunity to, uh, you know, to, to act or to continue his career. His career might well be over. You know, and it would suck, although it doesn't seem like like the the allegations are, are, you know, aren't true. It it seems like they are true, but it would suck that, you know, maybe somebody, you know, maybe they're not true and his career is over now because everybody assumes he's this, uh, you know, this predator. Now, I'm, I'm only using him as an example. I'm not saying that I don't think that he did the things that he did. I It seems apparent that he did. But you have to keep in mind that there are, uh, you know, there are predators on all sides. And, and and sometimes people see an opportunity to, you know, they, they say, well, look, look what's happening to these guys. Their career is over. Maybe I can, uh, you know, work or parlay this into something for me. And, you know, there there are people that exist that are like that. To assume that they that they do not exist is... You know, uh, it's foolish, you know, but I don't know. I've been talking about this for what, well over 20 minutes now. Um, you know, again, I, you know, I'm a fucking idiot. You know, I'm entitled to, to have stupid fucking opinions, you know, or perspectives on things. What's most important, at least I think, or at least what I like to tell myself is that, uh, you know, eventually I come around to to, uh, you know, figuring out what's the right, uh, perspective on things. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm, I'm there now, or at least I'm getting there, you know, but, uh, anyway, let's talk about something else. Um, has anybody seen, um, there's this video, uh, that I saw on YouTube. Um, it might be, uh, I'm, I'm sure you could search it. I, you know, I, it, it's called the the most armed or or the the uh, was it the most armed man or the 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 heaviest heavi- heaviestly armed man or something? The most armed man in America, right? And this this old guy lives out in Colorado, and um, you know they take a little tour on of of his estate. You know, and he's got like, I think they said somewhere in the neighborhood of like 
4,000 uh, guns, and this includes, uh, you know, machine guns, handguns. He's got a bazooka. He's got a flamethrower. He's got, you know, 4,000, uh, well, 4,000 guns plus the, the flamethrower. He's also got a working tank. He's got uh, a couple of military vehicles that are equipped with, uh, with uh, you know, fucking automatic weapons. Um, the guy is the epitome of what's known as a gun nut. And, um, uh, one of the disturbing things about it, besides the fact that he has so many fucking guns, is that, uh, um, the guy also has a bunch of, uh, mannequin dolls around his house that he, you know, and they're female, and he, uh, you know, appears to talk to them. Now, it could be that he was just sort of hamming it up for the, um, uh, for the camera, you know, cause he talks about like, Oh, you know, I come home, I ha- we, you know, we have coffee, we have a discussion. Um, you know, he said that he said something along the lines that when it gets cold out, he puts panties on them. You know, it's just, you know, it's weird, but at the same time, it's like, uh, you know, it's possible that he's just, you know, just eccentric and he's just playing it up for the camera. And, um, I was watching this video and and of course I you know I wanted to see what was being said in the in the comments section uh, a dangerous place to go if you uh wish to you know hold on to any degree of sanity you may have um and you know a lot of people kind of shared the opinion that you know yeah this guy is a fucking nut um you know something you know at the very I mean people are not saying take his guns away you know, and I think that's the one, uh, the one thing that, that constantly gets confused whenever, uh, gun reform or anything is, is discussed is because it automatically becomes this, uh, this black or white situation where it's one extreme or the fucking other. And, uh, I don't, I don't, I mean, I didn't see really anybody saying take away his guns, but there definitely, there's some concern there, Right. And uh, one of the things that, that struck me, which was kind of a, a common opinion in that comment section, for, for at least for the people that were sort of defending his, uh, his right to have all of those weapons, was that like, oh, you know, it's, a, it's like a four-minute video, it's heavily, you know, it's heavily edited, um, you know, you can't, you shouldn't make such a, a, a quick assumption about his mental state or, or whatever, Right. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's times like that where it's like, okay, you, you're pretending like this guy doesn't have issues or guys that, you know, that, that have fucking armories in their house or that, uh, you know, sort of, um, have a, uh, what appears to be an unhealthy infatuation with firearms. You're, you're dismissing the obvious craziness there. And my point is, is that if, you know, for those of you that are listening, it's like, you know, what's so wrong with a guy having all that shit? Well, imagine if instead, you know, instead of the guy, instead of it, you know, if it, imagine it wasn't a guy, it was lady. And instead of 4,000 weapons, she had 4,000 cats. There would be no question in your mind that... She was, uh, you know, she obviously had some uh, mental issues. I mean, we have a fucking, you know, there's a show on, what, TLC or whatever, Hoarders. Now, usually they're not talking about animals, but, you know, people that hoard things are usually looked upon as being, uh, to some degree, mentally disturbed. You know, so if if the if the video had been the 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 most uh, you know or the biggest cat lady or some shit and they walked in and there's 4000 cats you know even if they were being treated humanely even if there was plenty of space and there was no indication that there was any sort of abuse or or neglect or any of that shit you would still be like that lady is fucking insane 
So why is it that when it comes to guns, people can't be insane? You know, the the only thing, the only difference I see between this guy with his four thousand guns and the lady with the uh, with the hypothetical four thousand cats is that if the lady loses her shit, she can't go on a fucking shitstorm uh, killing spree. You know, but the guy with the four thousand guns. He technically could form a militia or just, you know, instead of forming a militia, he could, if he lost his shit, he could take out a lot of fucking people with the amount of fucking weapons that he has. So this assumption that, you know, that, that it's not crazy to, to love guns, but it is crazy to, I don't know, love cats or uh, I don't know, enjoy the fucking sounds of balloons popping or, you know, uh, I don't know, you know, you're afraid of fucking mustard, you know, like, like, why is all of those things crazy, even though those things technically can't really harm anybody except for the person that has the, the weird fetish for it, but, but it's not crazy when a guy has a distinct love affair for weapons that were designed to kill people. You know, if if, if he had 4,000 uh, hunting rifles, yeah, I probably wouldn't. I, you know, I'd be like, okay, this guy is, uh, you know, he's, he's a crazy hunter. You know? But the guy has fucking machine guns, handguns, Uzis. <clears throat> you know, semi-automatic, fully automatic rifles. He's got bazookas. He's got a fucking flamethrower. I mean, the guy is obviously fucking nuts. And, you know, and the thing is, is that if he were to lose his shit, a lot of people could die. You know, so I'm kind of tired of the whole argument that, uh, you know, oh, you know, there's no, there's no gun nuts or, you know, or, you know, uh, just because a guy loves guns, there's there's nothing, uh, you know, that, that he shouldn't be considered, uh, you know, crazy or whatever. Get the fuck out of here. Having an unhealthy uh, a fatu- infatuation or, um, I don't know, obsession with anything is a sign of, you know, mental disturbance. You know, if somebody was, uh, I don't know, an addic- you know, addicted to fucking heroin, um... You know, and, and you walked into their house and they just had, I don't, I don't know how Aaron is fucking sold. Is it sold by the kilo? I don't know. But you walked in and the, and there's kilos of heroin everywhere. Even if he seemed reasonable, you would still be like, you know what? This guy has a serious fucking problem. Hell, if the lady only had, if she had a hundred cats, you would think that there's something wrong with her. So I'm I'm getting kind of sick of this idea that, you know, that, that you can have, I mean, you can enjoy guns, you can en- enjoy shooting guns, you can, you can be a, a gun uh, appreciator. But there's a difference between enjoying going to the shooting range once in a while and, I don't know, arming yourself to the fucking gills and talking about, you know well-regulated militias and uh, the second amendment. I mean, the minute that you start talking about the second amendment and all of that shit, I already know you're crazy. You've got something, there's something fucking wrong in your head. Now, are you the type of crazy to go on a killing spree? Probably not, but there's definitely something wrong with you. Especially if you're making an argument for not reform, not for no gun reform whatsoever. If you're making the argument that, uh, you know, uh, there, you know, more people need to be armed, that there needs to be less regulation, that it's okay that mentally disturbed people are allowed to, to purchase weapons, then you're a fucking crazy person. There's no doubt about it. You're absolutely crazy. Because if, uh, you know, I don't know, I don't know how, how, you know, how much longer I can beat a dead horse here, but, 
you know, there needs to be gun reform. I don't think that people need their guns taken away, but if you are one of these people that, uh, you know, like this guy or, or somebody that feels like they need to walk around, you know, the streets with their fucking, uh, AR-15 or whatever on their back, then yeah, you probably should be on some sort of government watch list. You probably should because chances are, uh, you know, there, there's a, there's a higher chance that if you lose your shit, that other people are going to fucking suffer. You know, the other people are going to die than say the, the, the person that has, I don't know, too many fucking cats. Now, you know, what, what is common sense gun reform? Like what sort of gun reform am I talking about? I would say that you, it definitely needs to be harder to purchase a gun. It definitely can't be some situation where, you know, I've explained this in uh, in prior pod- podcasts. It, it definitely can't, it needs to not be a situation where you basically, you know, walk into to to a gun store and take a, you know, a quick, <clears throat> you know, a quick fucking 10 minute multiple choice quiz, you know, and pass that and and you know, and you're now fucking okay to buy fucking guns. I think the background checks need to be more fucking thorough. I think that you need, just like when you uh, get your driver's license, you need to demonstrate that you know how to handle that gun. You know, I think, you know, uh, unlike a uh, driver's license, I think that, that you probably need to be tested every year. I think you need to be, uh, you know, there needs to be at some point a psychological uh, evaluation of you every year. I don't think that you should have to pay for it. I think that the government should probably foot the bill for that because it is going towards the, uh, the, the safety and security of society. You know, I, I think that you shouldn't be allowed to own shit that the military uh, has. You don't need, you know, you don't need fucking automatic rifles. You don't need a bazooka. You don't need a fucking rocket launcher. You don't need an Uzi. You don't need, you know, you don't need a lot of the fucking weapons that that, that, that you're claiming that you fucking must have or that it's ridiculous that, that somebody would tell you you can't. You don't need them. Now, obviously, there's a difference between need and want. And, and I understand that the, the problem I have with people is not that they want to own these things. I get it. You want to own those things. I, I completely understand just like I want to own a fucking Lamborghini or a Bugatti or, or, uh, you know, a fucking, uh, you know, a riding lawnmower, but do I need them? No. And that's unfortunate, the argument that a lot of these people make is that, oh, I need it. What if, uh, you know, what if this, that, and, you know, the other fucking happens? You don't need them. You just want them. And if you do want them, if you must have them, then you need to fucking go through some pretty stringent, uh, you know, hoops to get them and to continue to own them. You know, is it going to stop the the criminals? Because that's, you know, that's the first thing that that they always go to is like, oh, you know, gun reform isn't going to stop. I mean, look what happened when, you know, such and such happened. Yeah, I get that. I get that criminals are going to be criminals, but they're going to be criminals regardless. That doesn't mean that, you know what? Okay, let's let's just fucking put a gun in every, you know, like that 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 speech, right? Put a chicken in every pot and a pot in every fucking uh I don't know, in every oven, I don't know what the fucking phrase is, but you know, the answer is not more guns. The answer is not less regulation. The answer is not let's pretend there isn't a fucking problem here. You know, one of the things I always hate whenever, you know, on, on Twitter that you get into uh, to any sort of debate with somebody when it comes to, uh, uh, to gun violence and, uh, you know, the the uh the killing sprees that have seemed to happen you know every other day now 
is that the first thing they go to is like, well, you know, the the the, the Chicago, you know, if you, the the gang problem in Chicago. I mean, why don't you focus on that? Well, the problem with that is, is yes, yes, that should be focused on. But the problem with that statement or with that argument is that uh, it wasn't a Chicago gang member that shot up Vegas. It wasn't a Chicago gang member that shot up that school uh, yesterday or the day before. It wasn't a Chicago gang member that shot up Sandy Hook. It wasn't a a, a Chicago gang member that shot up that uh, that nightclub. It, it wasn't a, shot, uh, <clears throat> a Chicago gang member that um, that shot up Col- Columbine. You know, I mean, I could go on and on. It wasn't a Chicago gang member that shot up the churches. It wasn't a Chicago gang member that climbed a fucking tower and started picking people off. You know, that's the thing, right? It's kind of like this uh, this, this kneeling uh, during the anthem thing that everybody is so up in arms about. You know, you completely lost sight of what's relevant to the situation. The reality is, is that most of the people that go on these fucking, uh, you know, uh, killing sprees, we're not Chicago gang members. They were, you know, law-abiding citizens who nobody thought that, you know, he, that per- he was always a good guy. You know, I, I can't imagine that he'd fucking do this. They always start out like that. And most of them, you know, aside, for, aside from a few, most of them obtained their weapons legally. So, yes, the, sh- the, the shit that's happening in Chicago is a problem. But it's not what caused these mass shootings. Just like, uh, you know, like with the, with the kneeling for the anthem thing. You got everybody, you know, or not everybody, you got some people that are very upset that, that, that the uh, uh, players in the NFL are kneeling during the anthem as though they're protesting the anthem or the country or... Well, uh, you know, maybe the country, but, you know, as though they're uh, protesting the, the, the military or, you know, or the police or whatever, you know, completely just have lost sight of the fact that what they are protesting is the fact that police officers have basically basically been given free will to murder innocent people, unarmed people. You know, they're protesting police brutality and and the fact that they are killing people, you know, under the guise of I was scared, even though some of these people that have been murdered were handcuffed, were children, were women, were pregnant women, had no weapons whatsoever. That's what they're protesting, not the fucking anthem. And by the way. For those of you that that are now like, oh, you know, I was with this guy until he started talking about the anthem. You do realize that in 2009, the military started paying the NFL to do the whole anthem thing. That it, before that, it wasn't a fucking, it, you know, they, I mean, they might have still played the national anthem, but the, the players weren't required to come out and take part in it. So what you're upset about is basically paid for and manufactured patriotism. The NFL has become basically military propaganda to try and convince you to get behind all of these fucking bullshit wars that we are constantly engaging in. That is all it is. You're upset because you have been duped. You're upset by manufactured uh, uh, patriotism. I would say you had a point if the military wasn't paying the NFL to do this. If it was a voluntary thing, then yeah, maybe you could be, uh, I don't know, a little upset, even though the reason for being upset is still absurd. You're upset at them for protesting the fact that, that the police are murdering innocent people. You're upset about that? It isn't about the anthem. Nobody gives a fuck about the anthem. It has nothing to do with the military. What it has to do is the fact that the the police are out of control and have been for quite some fucking time. 
I don't know why I'm yelling at you, but I'm just saying that, you know, it, it's very easy to, you know, for everybody to sort of engage in this, uh, this one extreme or the other, this black and white uh, existence when, when in fact a gray area does exist. You know, with the anthem thing, you, you, you support the troops. Well, then why aren't you fighting to not send them off to bullshit wars? Why aren't you, why aren't you protesting that? Why are you so angry at people, you know, protesting, uh, police brutality? And you're not upset at the fact that we don't take care of our veterans. Why are you not upset about that? You know, it it makes absolutely zero sense to be angry at these guys, you know, and to use this excuse like, oh, they make millions of dollars, so they should shut the fuck up. Really? So if I, I don't know, if I came to your house and gave you, uh, you know, uh, several million dollars, you'd shut the fuck up if I was like, you know what, I want to, I want to beat the shit out of your wife. You know, you're going to be, you're going to shut the fuck up about that. Is it going to be Okay. That, that I paid you basically to, uh, you know, uh, to beat your wife. I mean, get the fuck out of here with these stupid fucking arguments that people make. It doesn't matter that they make millions of dollars. That they, just because you have a certain amount of money, and I hate to quote fucking Joe Biden because he's a piece of shit, but just because you're rich doesn't mean you can't be patriotic. And, you know... And I know that you're like patriotic. These guys are not. That is, they're in fact being more patriotic than you getting upset about them. They are actually using their uh, their freedom of expression, their ability to protest. They're actually trying to stand up against an oppression, uh, uh, an oppressive, oppressive uh, system. Whereas you are busy. Uh, you know, getting angry at the people that are protesting, trying to make life better in this country. Yeah, I get that some of you is it's one hundred percent a race a race thing. You you know you just don't like the idea of black people, uh, you know, ever voicing any sort of fucking concern about what goes on uh, with them. I get that, and there probably is no, um, there's probably no helping you. At least, uh, you know, through this podcast, you you know, you're going to have to come to the realization that you're upset at people that have less power, less money than you. And you've been convinced to do that because some, you know, somebody that makes more money of you have has convinced you that the problem, that the whole reason that your life, uh, you know, that, that you experience any sort of uh, discomfort or or, uh, you know, your maybe your job fucking, you know, you lost your job or the factory that you worked at, you know, moved to fucking uh, China or Mexico or what, you know, they've convinced you that the person that has no power and no money, uh, you know, is the problem and not the guy in the fucking, you know, eight, nine, ten thousand dollar suit that is only looking for, uh, you know, another way to make a couple of more nickels. You know, so yeah, I get it. If, if your thing is based 100% on race there, there is no, there, there really isn't going to be any help, uh, for you, at least via my podcast, you're going to have to come to the realization on your own, but for the rest of you that it's not about, you know, that it's not that you're just upset that black people are, are, are fucking protesting, you know, you have to keep in mind what they are protesting. It isn't the anthem. It isn't the flag. It isn't the troops. It is the police brutality. It is the constant fucking murder that happens on that that happens uh, by the police, and they get no fucking consequence for it. None. I mean, out of all of the fucking deaths that have happened due to their, uh, uh, you know, due to their antics. Tamir Rice would be a perfect example of, you know, a perfect reason for cops to be to be penalized. But even those police were, you know, let off scot free, didn't get any fucking punishment whatsoever for murdering a 12 year old child with a with a BB gun 
that they they just happen to come upon and you know they I mean I've told this story before on this podcast okay the kid is in a an open carry state so you got to keep that in mind open carry means you're allowed to you know walk around with uh with with guns as long as you're not concealing them okay he's a 12 year old kid in a in a park by himself with a BB gun, somebody calls the police. The police, you know, they roll up, they get out of their car, two seconds later, Tamir Rice is dead. They didn't bother to ask him anything, they didn't try and, you know, uh, to, to figure out the situation, they didn't do anything other than pull up, get out, and shoot. And yet they got no punishment whatsoever. Because to them, it's like, oh, a black guy with a, with, with a gun, even though he's a kid, ah, shoot him. Must be a threat. In a state with open carry. So that's what they're protesting. Shit like that. The fact that the cops got no punishment whatsoever, probably still part of the, the department. That's what they're protesting. Not the anthem. Not the flag. Not the military. I mean, if you really want to stand up for the military, then I'd suggest you stop fucking, uh, you know, uh, war hawking. I, I would suggest that you'd fucking, you know, stand up against the bullshit wars that we're in, that we're engaged in. Iraq, Afghanistan, Syria, Niger, Yemen, Venezuela. Israel. You know, if you're so against, uh, or if you're so patriotic, then why aren't you upset at the fact that, that, you know, every day somewhere in the neighborhood of like 22 uh, veterans commit suicide because of the shit that they've seen in wars that they shouldn't even have been fighting. Why do you get so, you know, uh, why do you cheerlead for, for politicians where the, most of them dodge the draft, including our president? You get behind them as these great fucking leaders, and they were too fucking scared to, to go out there and fight themselves. I don't understand people anymore in this country. I, I really don't because it seems like nobody is bothering to to even take a second to, to, to consider what they're so upset about. What they're fighting for, what they're fighting against. Everybody is just so reactionary now. And the sad thing is, is you have a lot of people, you know, especially on, uh, on social media that, you know, have in order to try and, and, uh, legitimize their, um, their bullshit, they, you know, they, they start taking on, uh, personas of others. I just, uh, I, I just fucking, uh, saw this, um, this, uh, tweet, Twitter conversation, uh, going on where this, uh, you know, this person is pretending to be, uh, African American, a female, an ex Marine, um, from an Ivy league school, uh, a wife to a police officer, but a big time Trump supporter, which, you know, it's not out of the realm of possibility, but if, if you scrolled through this person's, uh, this timeline, especially their media, you come across a lot of, uh, tweets and, and retweets of, you know, white supremacists that, uh, that, that are making some pretty fucking, uh, you know, damaging, uh, statements about black people. I think the one that I found was uh, there was some guy, I don't remember what his name is, and I'm not going to fucking, I'm not going to look it up, but he had said, he, I guess he was talking about how Maxine Waters, for those of you who don't know who that is, this is a, an older black lady that's a congressperson or congressman, congresswoman, whatever the fuck. Uh, she had made some statement about, um, I don't know, taking out Trump, right? 
Now, I don't know if she was talking about taking him out for a date or taking him out of like out of office. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But the guy is like, well, you know, last time I checked, um, Trump doesn't date outside his species. Now, species implies that Maxine Waters, a black female, is, uh, you know, not human. Which is something that a lot of white supremacists and racists, they, you know, they like to throw around that, that black people aren't human, that they're subhuman, that they're, you know, three fourths of a person or whatever the fuck it is. And this person, this this lady that, that you know, that supposedly is black, is a Marine, is uh, goes, went to an Ivy League college, is married to a police officer, uh, you know, that's a huge Trump supporter was like, you know, she was refer she fucking basically co-signed to what this guy was talking about Maxine Waters not being of the same species and called her feral for me that is uh you know that's a red flag to me that lets me know that that person isn't black at all that's a white person pretending to be black Just so they can try and make it seem like, well, black people feel the same way as 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 white people do when it comes to, you know, to to minorities and to social issues and all of that shit. And I'm not saying that there are no black Trump supporters, but either that either this person is absolutely lying about who they are. Or they're as delusional as uh, that fucking Sheriff David Clark that, you know, the guy is is filled with so much self-hatred for the fact that he's black that, uh, you know, he's he's actually become even more racist than, say, somebody that would belong to, like, the KKK. The guy is absolutely out of his fucking mind. It's It's disturbing when you see, when you see somebody, somebody that's part of the you know the, the the minority the disenfranchised it's it's always weird to see these people adopt the perspective of the oppressors i think uh you know wh- what did they call it back in uh, slavery these are the 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 house slaves the ones that that start to uh they you know they no longer view themselves as as on the same level as the the field slave uh, but they they start to feel like they're equal to uh to to the master you know it, it is disturbing to watch people do this not just black people but just anybody anybody that's part of a minority in this country that's that's been disenfranchised it's weird to see you know uh, somebody that's gay be against uh gay marriage or you know or whatever it's just it's weird because it's like do you i mean it's like have you been brainwashed into into the way you're thinking are you mentally disturbed you know, but I see a lot of this happening on on Twitter, especially people pretending to be black and then giving the opinions and the perspectives of the racist white person. You know, am I saying that there aren't black people out there that, that you know, hate what other black people do and stand for? Yeah, of course they do. But those people have obviously, I don't know, they have some sort of, uh, you know, uh, mental deficiency. At least to the effect, if you're going to start parroting uh, the the perspectives and opinions of of the, the the extreme racist in this country, then you obviously have some issues. And that's why, you know, I, I called this person out on Twitter. I was like, you know, either you're not who you say you are or you're delusional. Because I, I, I've yet to ever see, you know... Uh, you know, aside from, from, um, you know, people that engage in self hate, I've yet to see, you know, black people, uh, sort of get on board with the idea that, that black people are a different species than white people. It just doesn't make any fucking sense. And how did I end up here? I don't know. I, I really don't know. All I'm, I, I guess to get back to whatever it is that, that got me going on this is that, um, you know, people are, I'm losing faith in, in humanity because it seems like nobody is stopping to think, and you know, myself included with the, you know, with the sexual harassment thing, no one stops to think, although I, you know, I have made attempts 
to, you know, broaden my perspective, to become more empathetic. But it just seems like, every, you know, when it comes to like politics and, and, uh, you know, um, just our country in general, people seem to be more concerned with their tribal fucking bullshit than actually thinking things through. You know, it's a sad fucking day. Uh, God, how long have we been talking? Oh, an hour. Wow. Has there been anything funny? You know, I don't know. It just feels like, uh, you know, it feels like a very serious um, sort of day, at least for me, you know, I'm just, uh, you know, every, every day. And I think that's probably why the, the sexual harassment thing has, uh, has annoyed me. Cause it's just like, can we just have a day where there isn't some fucking horrific shit being discovered or disclosed or uncovered or whatever? It just every day it's something. It's either some, you know, one of my celebrity heroes is exposed as being a fucking uh, a, a shitty human being, or there's a, a mass fucking shooting, or you know, uh, fucking the Democrats are gearing up to fucking you know lose again. I, it's just it's always something, and it just I, I'm at the point where it's like, all right. Are we are we going to get our shit straight, or are we just going to continue down this obvious path of fucking destruction? You know, you guys probably don't give a shit about that, and I don't know. You know, maybe I shouldn't. Uh, maybe I shouldn't take it so fucking harshly. I, you know, it's just, I don't know. It's like I, sometimes I feel like I am stuck in a room with uh, with people that are purposely trying to be stupid. You know, one of my biggest pet peeves, I've said this on this podcast before, one of my biggest pet peeves is people that pretend to be dumb. You know, usually it's, it's somebody that thinks that, you know, being the fucking, uh, being the the idiot of the group is, uh, you know, somehow cool or whatever, but you know, I don't like it even in a, in the, the professional world or the political world or whatever, where people are just, you just determined to be stupid that you will deny any sort of facts that don't fit your narrative. And this goes for everybody on all sides of things. Um, I felt like, I felt like a couple of years ago or maybe more. I don't know. I think, I guess what's most disturbing about the current fucking climate in this country is that, uh, is I found out that a lot of people that I respected uh, politically turned out to be just phony and false and just, you know, they, 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 I mean like Bill Maher, for example, right? Um, I used to, to watch, you know, his show real time fucking with Bill Maher or whatever. I used to watch it religiously because I actually believed that, you know, that he was, sort of anti-establishment, he was definitely anti, uh, you know, uh, religious, and, uh, you know, he seemed to, to want to fight for a better existence, and then the 2016 thing comes along, and, and it gets revealed that he is just a, an establishment hack, that he actually thinks that, uh, you know, Hillary Clinton wasn't as corrupt as, uh, as a person could be that, that, uh, that, that sexism is the reason that she didn't, uh, that she didn't win. And that, you know, this fucking Russia bullshit, you know, I mean, it, it's, it, it seems silly, right. To, to, you know, to feel this way about some fucking TV personality, but it's like, you know, when you grow up th- or, you know, when you, when you establish, uh, you know, or I don't know, established, that's not the right fucking word. Uh, you know, when you look up to people and, and you respect their opinion, to have it be revealed that that what you thought they were, they aren't actually are, and it turns out they're fucking the opposite of what you would fucking want in a person to be, you know, it can be a little disturbing. You know, same thing could be said about Keith Oberman, um, 
fucking uh what's his name that was on the fucking daily show uh john jonathan fucking something or other the the british dude john oliver um uh what's his face uh i don't know seth myers you know a lot of these people that that you know you would look at and you would assume that oh you know they're uh, they seem to have their fucking head on straight, and then this 2016 thing comes along, and Trump becomes president, and suddenly all like the mask has been ripped away from everybody. And while you know I've said in the past that I that that one of the things, you know, as much as I fucking despise Trump, that one of the things I'm grateful for as far as his. Uh, him becoming president is he's basically pulled the curtain back and revealed, you know, all of the fucking phoniness. He's revealed all of the fucking corruption. He's revealed the 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 people that you thought were fucking, you know, were were liberal or or progressive were actually more closely, you know, uh, Republican and and conservative. And you know, he he's pulled the fucking curtain back. And, you know, and I appreciate that because now I know, all right, I bought into the bullshit. You know, I, I, I know now that, you know, not now. I mean, I've always been, you know, pretty, uh, uh, I've always been into to, to politics and stuff. I mean, I minored in it in college, uh, you know, uh, uh, political science. Um, but, you know. I don't know what the, what why why am I fucking talking about this? I'm just I'm just saying that you know a lot of people that I respected have turned out to be uh you know the opposite of what I would normally consider respectful. And you know on on some degree I'm grateful because they've been exposed, but on the other it's like, well fuck, man. You know, I I spent, you know, I invested uh you know some degree of energy into uh, you know, watching these people's shows or reading their articles or whatever. And it turns out that, you know, they're basically just corporate puppets that are just, you know, that, that absolutely have no fucking integrity or character. Because if any of them did, they would have, they would have stood up a long time ago. Cause I, I don't believe for a second that you know like like Bill Maher for example I don't believe for a second that he really thinks Russia is the reason that we have Trump or that he really thinks Hillary Clinton isn't corrupt you know I don't I don't think for a minute he he believes this I think that he's paid to have that fucking opinion just like your Joanne Reeds and your Neera Tandens and your um what's the Rachel Maddow's and shit, you know, they're, they're paid to have a perspective and it just so happens that perspective lines up with the people that, uh, you know, pretty much dictate policy in this country, you know, and that's what I can't stand about them the most is because it, I realize that they're not, you know, that they're not even like real human beings they're, they're, There's nothing about them that's fucking real. They're just paid to have a perspective and they're paid to push that perspective, which is precisely how we ended up in the situation we're in now, because we've been fucking, we've been uh, duped. Everybody, everybody's been duped on, you know, at some point, uh, you know, because of, of people like this that push the fucking narrative that the that the corporations that the oligarchy uh wants they they push their narrative and they convince people to to get behind it even though it makes no fucking sense i mean you know i've said it before in previous podcasts it, i don't i'll never understand i mean i'll say the same thing now about democrats as well but i've never understand why or understood why the ordinary fucking mo the guy that's you know middle class or even in the uh, the the poorer class why they would be a Republican when the Republicans have never done anything to to help their, you know, that would help their fucking well-being in any way. In fact, they constantly try and make your life worse. You know, a couple of years ago, I would have just said, oh, it's the Republicans. 
you know, and the Democrats are good. But then you do a little research, uh, you know, behind what fucking Democrats have done. You realize, well, why the fuck is anybody, you know, why does anybody belong to either of these fucking uh, parties? Because they're both looking out for the, uh, you know, the establishment's fucking well-being. They're both, you know, beholden to, to the fucking donors that donate to their campaigns. They're, you know, as long as they are in power, we'll never have things like free health care or single payer health care or you know free uh college or living wage or our veterans being actually taken care of will never end you know the 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 non-stop fucking wars will never fucking end with them in charge They'll never fucking end. That's why, you know, when people like, oh, you know, uh, you know, yeah, Hillary's the lesser of the two evils and that you should have voted, you know, fuck that. Because she's just part, she's part of the fucking problem, which is why I couldn't vote for her because a vote for her wouldn't have changed anything. The only thing it would have changed is how upset people are right now. That's the only thing that, 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 uh, you know, would be different. You know, and then the thing is, is there's a lot of people right now probably listening to this podcast are like, ah, oh, you're out of your fucking mind. But tell me, what would have changed? Would we have gotten out of the wars with Hillary Clinton? Would we have single payer health care with Hillary Clinton? The, the the lady that that uh, yelled at the top of her lungs in in glee that we would never have a single payer system in this country? Would we have free uh, free college? Would we have a living wage when she was uh, saying, you know, instead of $15, she was talking about 12 Well, even 15 isn't enough. I mean, especially if you live on, on either of the fucking coasts. 15 isn't going to get you out of fucking poverty. It isn't going to get you... It isn't going to provide you the ability to keep a roof over your head or, or food on your table or any of that shit. And she wanted 12 would uh you know would she break up the banks uh would she fucking go against wall street would she do any of the shit that's the actual fucking cause of everybody in the middle class and the, you know in the poorer classes issues would she have changed any of that the answer is no nothing would have changed the only thing that would have changed is that you know, you would feel a little bit better but the problem with feeling better that's what happened with Barack Obama. Everybody felt great, even though he changed nothing that Bush had done, which was kind of the reason that people elected Obama, right? They thought that they, you know, I mean, he ran on a platform of change. Tell me what changed. Somebody, please tell me what fucking changed under Obama. Because I'm pretty sure he didn't fucking do any of the shit that he promised he would do. He didn't break up the fucking banks. He made them bigger. He didn't end the wars. He got us into more. He didn't fucking go against Wall Street. He got in bed with Wall Street. He didn't give us single-payer health care or the public option. What he gave us was a right-wing think tank version of of fucking health care, which was Romney care. Nothing changed under him, and nothing would have changed under Hillary, at least with Trump. You know, I voted for Jill Stein, by the way, for anybody that's like, oh, what, would you vote for Trump because you didn't like Hillary? No, I voted for Jill Stein because that was the only option that, you know, as far as I could see, that, you know, wanted to get out of the fucking wars, that wanted to, you know give us single payer health care that wanted free college they wanted a living wage you know it was the only option as far as i'm concerned but you know one of the things that i'm glad we have trump for is because people are finally starting to get fucking outraged at the real fucking problem I mean, yeah, you still have these factions, you know, the Hillary supporters that, uh, you know, are still trying to maintain this fucking idea that the Democrats are are the good guys and the Republicans are the bad guys. Yeah, you still have some people there, but a majority of the country 
is now rightfully upset and is trying to change shit. So that's why I think, uh, you know, uh, having Trump as as president has actually been, you know, I mean, he's a complete fucking shit show. But if anything, he has been the catalyst towards real fucking change to towards, uh, you know, where the lives of the middle class and, and, the, and the poor might actually have a chance of getting better. It isn't going to happen under him, obviously, but it will lead to, you know, uh, I mean, it's already started with the with the midterm elections, even though the, you know, the establishment Democrats are trying to pretend like, ah, oh, you know, we we don't need the progressives. But, it, you know, if you actually look into who won, you'll see that, uh, that, that, that most of the candidates were the ones that were running on a progressive platform. So we won. You know, but, you know, I mean, if you, you know, I, I've always been sort of a, a glass, glass is half full kind of a guy. So that's why I look at, 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 you know, I try and see the silver lining in having Trump as president. It's also why I, you know, I'm adamant that you don't try and fucking impeach him because, you know, he, he's a gift. And I know you're going to be like a gift, a gift of what? Yeah. yeah and a gift of shit. I get it. But the man is. He can't get anything fucking done. He's inept. He's a buffoon. He can't get any of the fucking horrific fucking policies that he's trying to fucking implement. He can't get them done. You want to impeach him and put fucking Mike Pence in his place? A guy who could get shit done? Are you out of your fucking mind? You know, but but like I said, I mean, this is part of the reason why I'm losing, uh, losing hope or faith in humanity because a lot of people are they're just dead set on being stupid. That there is no there is no fucking forward thinking. There is no you know no uh, actual research done. It's just ah oh, well, you know they say this on MSNBC or CNN or Fox News and therefore it must be true even though both or all of those fucking uh, news outlets are owned by corporations that push a narrative that is always in their favor. If you're still, you know, getting your information via mainstream media, whether that be CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, the, you know, any of the fucking newspapers, Washington Post, the New York Times, uh, you know, I don't know, the the Boston Globe, the, you know, fucking the Bumblefuck uh, post in, you know, in Alabama, I, it's probably not called Bumblefuck, but you know what I'm saying. If, if that's where you're getting your information from, then just keep in mind that all of those media outlets, those mainstream, they're all owned by the corporations that are pushing their perspective, their narrative. They're pushing to keep themselves in power, to continue to make the decisions of what's best for the country, even though none of those decisions really ever fucking make it better for somebody that's, you know, in the middle class or, or you know, in poverty. You know, you got to keep in mind that the that we live. You know, that the, these people are fucking human beings that are susceptible to the same shit that you and I are fucking susceptible to. This is why I could never, you know, um, I could I could never fucking get on board with this idea that Hillary Clinton isn't as bad as the 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 male politicians that fucking you know sell out to their fucking donors. You know, the, I mean, either she's not human or she is. And if she is human, then of course she's susceptible to, this, to the very same things that the male politicians are susceptible to. Somebody gives you, if somebody gives you, uh, you know, 10, 15, you know, a hundred thousand fucking dollars, you're telling me that, uh, that you're going to bite the hand that fucking feeds you. 
when it comes down to it, you're, you're telling me that you're going to go against the person that gave you tens to, to hundreds of thousands of dollars and maybe even millions. You're going to go against them. You know, get the fuck out of here. You're not doing it just like she wouldn't do it. Just like Obama didn't fucking do it, which is why he's on his, uh, you know, million dollar fucking speaking tour, you know, basically collecting all that fucking bribe money. You know, they're all fucking susceptible to it. They're all guilty. They're all fucking corrupt. And shit in this country will not fucking change until some of you that are so dead set on being stupid stop doing it. Until you start learning to to be upset at the fucking right things. Like the fact, you know, like going back to the NFL, you know... You're not upset at the fact that the that, that, that people are being fucking murdered by the police. You're not upset at that. I mean, or you you're you're upset that they're upset about it. But you're not upset at the fact that you know that that veterans aren't taken care of. That we're fighting, you know, set or involved in in seven fucking wars. Uh, you know, you're not upset at the fact that that 20 something uh, veterans commit suicide every single day because they were exposed to that bullshit war. You're not upset at that. I don't get it. How can you call yourself a patriot and and not be upset at that shit? Why are you upset at the people that are actually exercising their constitutional rights? And I've yet to to hear other than, you know, maybe the the one or two fucking uh, seriously bitter uh, military veterans. I've yet to hear really any fucking veteran be upset at what Colin Kaepernick did or what these NFL people or players are doing. And even the ones that are like, well, I don't agree with it, but, you know, they have a right to do it. I've yet to hear any of that shit. What I hear is a bunch of people that never been in the military. They don't realize that they're getting upset over manufactured patriotism. Well, I, you know, that's what I see. I see a lot of stupid fucking people out there making shit fucking, you know, even worse. I don't know. I feel, you know, oh, holy shit. All right, I'm going to end this podcast here because I feel like, you know, I mean, I could go on, you know, I, this podcast can turn into a three, four, five hour fucking podcast, but you know, you guys are probably already uh, sick of, of, um, listening to me fucking yap. Um, by the way, uh, I created, or I finally got on the fucking, uh, on the ball with, uh, with having a, you know, trying to legitimize my fucking podcast. I now have a website. Um, well, I mean, if you, if you go to www.theeffingpodcast.com, that will take you to, uh, to my Podbean site where my, uh, podcasts are uploaded. But I also have a, um, uh, an actual website. And uh, I'll give you the fucking address. It's long as shit. So if you do plan on uh, going to it, uh, I would suggest you get out a fucking pencil because there's no way you're going to remember all of this shit. So if you want to go to my new official, unofficial fucking website for the podcast, uh, you'll have to go to HTTPS, uh, what is it, colon, forward slash, yeah, forward slash, forward slash, the effing podcast dot wix w i x site s i t e dot com forward slash j d u b b. Uh, I know it's long as shit, but um, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I keep getting these uh, these fucking messages from uh, from some of you. That, uh, you know, are like, why, why don't you fucking be legit already? Why don't you fucking do what everybody else does and create a fucking website and all that other bullshit? So that's what I did. Um, so, yeah, if, I mean, the, you know, there's nothing really on the website yet. Um, you know, it's still a work in progress. But if you do, you know, if you want to check it out, if you want to just go get a good fucking laugh at, uh, at my, uh, you know, uninspiring fucking uh, web page building skills, uh, you know, go check it out or, or fucking don't. I don't know. You know, you do what you want to do. But anyway, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. 
Um, it is Wednesday. Uh, you know, I don't know if I'll give you another podcast on Thursday. If I don't, I'll definitely give you one on Friday. Okay, we'll try and make it a three podcast uh, a week. Um, for those of you new to the podcast, I usually do uh, a couple of these a week, usually Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, but you know, it just so happens that this week uh, my schedule is a little more open, so um, I'm giving you more. Um, if you are new. Um, I don't know where you, you know, where you managed to click on to this, uh, to this podcast, but if you did, can you please fucking subscribe? I'll never understand uh, these people that, uh, you know, cause I know you're listening. I look at the, uh, the analytics. I know people are listening, but why you don't subscribe? Uh, you know, it's like, uh, well, you know, how, how much fucking effort does it take you cunts? Can you do me a fucking solid for once? Can you just can you just do that for me one fucking time? Is it really going to kill you to hit fucking subscribe or or whatever it is that you need to fucking do? You know, I, I people act like it's a fucking uh, like a like you're making a commitment to buy a fucking home or some shit. It's hitting subscribe. If you like the podcast, subscribe to the podcast. You don't like the podcast, well go fuck yourself. I don't know. But anyway, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. I hope you're having a good week. And, uh, you know, I'll talk to you again, uh, you know, in a couple of days or tomorrow, whatever. Anyway, I'm going to get the fuck out of here. Uh, Just like always, don't take any shit and go fuck yourself. Peace.